Thank you for checking out this video. So this is basically a wrap up for the Monster Mania 42 convention that I went to. Um, actually when I'm recording it, it, I just went yesterday. When this is going up, same day that I'm recording it, it actually is still going on because they do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But um, first, first off, let me tell you, I must apologize for the way my voice sounds. It's a little bit raspy <clears throat> and I have water that I'll have to take a sip of from time to time. One, had a lot of talking yesterday because, you know, when you stand in line for autographs at conventions, you end up talking to a lot of people. A lot of cool people, by the way, because a shared horror interest leads to a lot of good conversation, to be honest. Uh, the other thing is that weather's been kind of crazy around me, so my sinuses are going nuts. And that's just like all sorts of leakage. Anyway, you guys don't need, don't need to get all those details. So also my, my excitement level might be a little bit lower than usual because I'm just feeling kind of... Uh, the other thing is, I'm almost 40 years old, I'm about to be 38, and um, standing in line for a total of like six hours for autographs is just not good on your body. I mean, honestly, no matter what age you are, it's just tough on your body, but as you get older, it becomes tougher and tougher and tougher. My buddy Rich, who I was with, uh, was having the same issue. We were kind of laughing about it, we're like, God, we're so old, and he's like, my knees are killing me, and I'm like, my lower back is killing me. By the time we walked out of there, we were just like kind of hobbling a little bit. Uh, it's just kind of funny, but you pay a physical price for getting some good autographs, and that's just the way it is. So anyway, uh, Monster Mania 42 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Overall, I had a very good time. Uh, as usual, uh, the last time, the last one I went to, number 40, was a really good time as well. I have a review video up for that. The one before that that I went to, I forget which number that was, that was the one where they had a lot of problems, uh, where they were letting in too many people, selling too many tickets, stuff like that. But I can tell you, having been to 40 and now to 42, that they fixed, like, everything, pretty much. And that's all you can really hope for. You know, when, when issues like that come up, you know, I know people get mad about it, but look to what the people do to fix it. And Monster Mania fixed it. Like, things are good. And the other thing is, they don't just fix the problem and then stop. They're continually doing other things. Like, this year, in addition, because there's always been a problem with parking, because it's at a hotel and there's only so much parking there, and then there's street parking, and then people are still kind of screwed, like, where do I park? So... This year, they actually worked something out where they got access to a parking lot at, like, some office complex, office building complex, uh, like, a mile or two down the road. And they hooked it up with the hotel to, like, run a shuttle from there. So I was like, that's really awesome. But what I would say is, if you don't want to have to deal with all that shuttle stuff and you plan to go to this or one or a convention kind of like this, go as early as you can. Uh, my buddy Rich and I always uh, buy the pre-show tickets. So it's like $5 extra per ticket, and you can get in one hour earlier. Now, it's not one hour earlier for autographs, but it's one hour earlier for all the vendor stuff, which is fine because, you know, I'm going to go around and look at all the vendor stuff. I'm also going to uh, buy some things, and it's just nice to go around and have less people around you because you don't feel as rushed because sometimes around those vendor tables, it gets kind of crowded, and you kind of have to, like, wait in line, in a sense, to, to look at the wares that these people have, so... That's just nice. And then also parking is less of an issue when you come really early. Although this year in comparison, or this con in comparison to number 40 that we went to, we showed up around the same time and we could not get parking in the parking lot. Whereas the time before that, we had no problem at that time. So I think other people are kind of getting wise to go as early as you can. So it's just kind of, it's what it is. It's what you end up dealing with and that's fine. So anyway, uh, we got there. I'll go over a few of the things that um, we got from the vendors. Pro tip, whether you're a male or a female going to the convention with a friend or by yourself, if you are not going with a significant other and they are back at home, because you're leaving them for the day, I find it very courteous to pick something up for them. You know, it, you may not be able to always, always find something to fit what they're into, especially if they're not into horror, but I've been able to find something for my wife which she appreciates. Uh, there's a company who shows up there called Arcane Bunny Society, and she does handmade soaps, which is really cool. So the last one at, at uh, number 40, I got her a handmade soap, and it was like a coffee-infused one, which she really enjoyed. So this time I stopped by. Didn't have the coffee-infused one again, but she did have some really interesting stuff. This one being the best. Um, this one's the... What's the name on this one? The Mama. It's like the pink mama. 
literally it's like a very, you know, pink soap. And it smells a little bit floral, a little bit like citrusy, fruity. It smells really nice. I might actually use a little bit of this. Look, there's no shame in that, people. There's no shame. Uh, and then I also got her this one, which is less on the fruity end, I believe. And this one is called Meat at the Waterfront. It's very blue. And this is kind of like a, it's got a little bit of like a, a, uh, a florally and kind of like a wood note to it. Maybe like fresh rain type ordeal is what they're going for, like a spring-ish. It's a little more subdued than, than the other one. So, both pretty good soaps. Let's just set those aside. And then, I was very excited, actually, because there's a board game, a horror board game that I've been looking at online. It's come up with, like, promos online and stuff, but also has shown up with ads in Room Org Magazine, which, as you know, if you watch enough of my videos, I love that magazine. been reading it for, like, ten years at least at this point religiously I, every issue I read every issue so pretty much cover to cover too so there's it's a game called mixtape massacre and it's based on 80s slashers and the whole premise is you as a player kind of control this 80s slasher character that's an original character because they're not you know dealing with licensing and stuff like that so you just go around and you try and like kill people and there you have like abilities and there are like cards that you that you pull and like some of them are like VHS tapes and some of them are like cassette tapes, which is very 80s and very cool. They just did a really good job of like tying it into 80s stuff. So I'd had interest in this board game because I'd seen it a bunch and I just never pulled the trigger. I kept being like, oh, that looks really good. I kind of want it. Well, they had a booth at Monster Mania. So I was like, if there's ever a time, like this is the time. So I went over and talked to them. Uh, the two people who are doing it are actually the same two people who do the kind of like walkthrough game video on their website. So that's cool. They're out there like in the field, like making it happen. So I picked it up. I got, this is what it looks like. Mixtape Massacre. Yeah, look at that. And some stuff on the back. So like I said, this it's something I've been looking at for a while, so I figure, hey, this is the time. So it was like 50 bucks. Now, if people are like, whoa, a board game for 50 bucks, honestly, if, if you haven't been buying board games in quite some time, it's going to seem steep, but that's not outrageous nowadays, to be honest. Uh, that's kind of what it's like for, for especially like independent type board games. So I'm really excited to get into that. I was really excited to talk to the Mixtape Massacre people. And they legitimately like, they're like, let us show you how the game works. They had all the stuff laid out and they kind of went over all the rules to kind of give you a feel for what it would be like, which was really nice. They were super nice, super nice people. And I'm excited to get into that. So that said... Let's move on to the autographs. So, like I said, all in all, we stood in line for like six freaking hours. So, my plan of attack always when I go to these conventions is identify who you think is going to have the longest lines and who you want to get autographs for. So, if, if you identify, okay, I think these people have the longest lines and you say, some of those people I want to get, prioritize from there. Who do you want the most? In that case, as soon as you get to that convention, pretty much start lining up. Start lining up. So we did that for Monster Mania 40. As soon as we got in, pretty much, we just looked at like one or two vendor tables and then just started getting in line because people will start lining up in preparation to get into the autograph rooms, which, you know, waiting around for like an extra hour, like, uh, kind of sucks, but at the same time, you're like, eh. So we kind of split it a little bit. We didn't get in line until like 15 like 20 to 15 minutes before the autograph rooms were going to open but that's you know that's enough ahead of of the other people who are going to only start to be let into the convention at at 10 o'clock that you know you'll be fine because you'll get ahead and we immediately identified i wanted to get nev campbell's autograph and i was like i feel like she's going to be a big one so we got in line for nev campbell pretty much immediately even though that was the case, we ended up waiting for her for about two hours because, you know, between the, uh, she didn't show up to her table to sign, like, right at 10 o'clock when it starts. I think she was a little bit later than that. I could be wrong, though. But anyway, it took us, like, two hours. But, like I said, we, we had some really good conversations with some people in line um, just going over, like, what do we love in horror? Like, what horror movies are great? So, it's just, it's always a good time. Like, 
And the thing is, if you if you're standing in line and you're not talking to the other people around you, step out of your comfort zone. Like just start having conversation because a it makes time go by way faster, and b there's some really cool people standing with you in line, and you guys obviously have a shared interest. So just start talking, man. It's great. So uh, got up there, met Nev Campbell. She was very very nice, very nice. I believe her autograph was like six was sixty. Um, but then they, they they do this thing where all of them now are doing it. It's like, here's an, the price for the autograph. Here's a price for just getting a selfie with them. And then here's a price for the combo. And there's usually like a little bit of a discount. So I don't remember what her selfie was because I don't do the selfie thing. I'm like, I don't need a picture. All I'm going for is the autographed item. That's all I really care about. But there are a lot of people who really care about the selfie. So like, um, here's an example. Like someone was like, it was like 50 for an autograph and um and 60 or it was like 50 for an autograph and like 50 for the selfie but if you want the combo then it's 80 so you're you're like saving 20 bucks if you do if you do both of them so i don't know but you know it's just not my thing anyway so nev campbell was like super nice really 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 nice um and I just kind of talked to her. I always kind of want to have, this is something that Rich kind of taught me, my friend Rich Smith. Thank you for teaching me this, Rich. He's like, you really probably want to have like something memorable. So like come up while you're waiting in line, like come up with some sort of like question that you can ask them that either you've really want to been, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm tired because of the con, but um, you either really want to know the answer to from that person or is an interesting question that could kind of get them going a little bit to give you some cool information. Because then you're more likely to have a cool story tied to the autograph you got. So that's what I've tried to do. And with Nev Campbell, I was just kind of asking her like, hey, are you, I mean, when you were doing the filming for Scream, were you at all aware that this film could be as big as it was and that could it could potentially have the impact that it did on you know horror the horror industry and she was like yeah no I really didn't think about it all that much and she was like I mean I know that I knew it was a really good script and I was excited about doing the film but she was like I was too new of an actress at that point to really understand what it could end up being and she was like to tell you to give you an example she said they um her agent ended up calling her when the film was in theaters and said oh my god you know just said, hey, Scream made $32 million at the box office. And she told me, I thought she was saying that, like, that was bad. Like, that wasn't good enough. And then she's like, oh, no, 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 it's it, it's actually great. And she's like, oh, okay, awesome. So she was kind of just like, I mean, like, that's how little I knew at that point. And she was like, but obviously, you know, as time went on, I started to realize what, you know, how good that film really was and how things really came together and how important it ended up being, so... It was just kind of cool to hear that directly from her, someone who was so heavily involved in it. And she, like I said, she's very, very nice. So she signed, I got this picture signed. Her, obviously, from Scream, holding the kitchen knife. And she wrote up there, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, as I'm sure people see. And I always get mine personalized. I'm not the type of person who looks at autographs and thinks I can sell that in some years. I don't care. I'm going for me. I want the autographs for me, so I always ask to have them personalized. And the other thing is, she was very, um, excuse me, wipe my eye. Sinuses get my eyes watery too. But she was uh, accommodating with, if, if you wanted specific lines of dialogue, they would write that down on the sticky note with your name, and she would write that down. So it's really cool that she was that accommodating. I just didn't have any preference. I was kind of like, she can do whatever she wants. But... It, the interesting thing is with this quote, her doing the what's your favorite scary movie, it made me start thinking, I was just like, you know, it's kind of weird when you're getting someone's autograph and they put a quote that's not their quote from the film. It's just like a really well-known quote. So it just got me thinking about that. And I was like, it's kind of weird. Like, I'm cool with that being the quote on there. I just think it's kind of funny that it's not a quote that she said. It's just there are certain things that end up standing out for uh, about a film over the years and people start to like misremember things too because I'm sure there are people out there who think that's one of her lines and that's just you know something that happens but anyway that was Nev Campbell she's really awesome thank you Nev I'm sure she'll never see this 
I'm sure none of the people that I met will see this, except maybe the last people. Maybe. They strike me like they, they might be like that. Um, so then we stood in line for a long time for Meatloaf. Yes, Meatloaf, the singer, songwriter, was in Rocky Horror Picture Show, was in Fight Club, was in Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. <laughs> One of these things is a little out of place. Uh, I, I know you know. But, um, yeah, Meatloaf. So... I think he's done an excellent job. I love the film Fight Club. It was a movie I watched a lot in college, so it was really important to me. Read the book and everything, so loved it. Uh, so I was like, I got to meet him because he was he was Robert Paulson. He was Bob from from Fight Club. So we stood in line for him. That ended up being about another two hours, honestly, um, maybe a little bit more, because he was taking time with fans. And when we got close enough and we were seeing how he was interacting with some people, it was really sweet. It was really nice. Some people were, like, legitimately crying because they loved him so much and the time that he was putting in with them. The only thing that irked me, though, is there was this one guy, this one guy who was wearing, like, a blazer or something over his regular T-shirt with pants. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the fashion, but I'm just calling it out because if people see this video and they know who I'm talking about because you saw that guy... That guy was kind of a, a D-bag because I understand you want to talk to the to this person, but you need to know when the limit is because there are a lot of people waiting behind you and it's common courtesy. Like take your time, take a little bit of time, but I'm not kidding. This guy was talking to Meatloaf for over five minutes, probably close to 10 minutes, which some people would be like, oh, like 10 minutes, that's not really that long. But if you've been standing in line for hours and you're waiting to meet this person, 10 minutes is a very long time, especially when you're within view of the signing table. And that's just not okay. You know, I don't fault Meatloaf for it. Like, I know that he just wants to have meaningful interactions with the fans. Robert England is that way. When we went to Monster Mania 40, he was very much that way. But he wouldn't take that much time. He would kind of, like, cut it off at a decent amount of time, like take a minute or two, that's fine, which it is It is a decent amount of time, like one to two minutes is a decent amount of time with a celebrity while they're, you know, giving you an autograph, but this person just would not leave the table, he kept talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, and I, I just say this to say it really irked me, it irked a lot of people in line, and I don't put that blame on Meatloaf, I put that blame on that fan, people, if you're like that, be better, that's not... That's not okay. Be courteous. That's not okay. So anyway, <laughs> on a more happy note, when I did get up and met Meatloaf, he was super nice, and he signed this picture for me and said, To Carlin, rockin'. He was signing everything as rockin'. Yeah, so see... Oh God, sorry about the ring light. Yeah, so it's him as Bob from Fight Club, and he's coming at you. Like it a lot. So, uh... Yeah, so really nice um, guy. I talked to him about his role, how to get his role in Fight Club. And he, I was like, did you audition or anything? He was like, no, no, no. He's like, I, I never audition for roles. I was like, really, you don't? He's like, well, it's it's known that I can act, and, I, and I've been an actor. He's like, so I get people calling me for roles, and that happened with Fight Club, which was really interesting because you would think, like, he got a call from David Fincher for Fight Club? And, like, Brad Pitt and Edward Norton are in this? And Jared Leto? And you're just like, oh, interesting. But, you know, there are some people that when they're when they're getting a film ready, they have certain people in mind. And then they're not necessarily always, like, the huge names when it comes to acting. So it was interesting for him to say that. But he also said that he has a good reputation. Like, people know that he's going to show up on time every day. He's going to know his lines. He's going to know what he needs to do on set. And he's like, I'm a professional, and I take things seriously, and I'm no pro, I'm not, I'm not a trouble person. And he said, I could tell you some stories about some people who I've worked with on set, who are very unprofessional, and I just don't get it. And he's like, I won't say anything about who they are because you would know. Uh, he's like, it's not like Brad Pitt or anything though. He's like, he's totally professional, but he said, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to, you know, which is classy. That's a classy move, but. Just know that there are people in Hollywood out there who are difficult to work with, but Meatloaf is not one of them. So that was pretty cool. So I really had a good time meeting him. That was great. But that was the end of my time there, and I was starting to like really be like, oh, God, oh, God. 
But you get kind of like a bit of a recharge when you actually meet the person you've been waiting hours for, and you're just like, oh, yeah, that was awesome. That's a cool interaction. And then the last, I'm going to say person, two persons that I met, this was my favorite. This is my favorite interaction of uh, the convention. It was the Sasuke twins, um, Sylvia and Jen, and they are the sweetest people. They're so nice. They're, like, super, super sweet. You can tell they're very thankful to have fans, and you can tell they're super excited about horror. I knew that going into it because I've read a lot of interviews with them. Uh, but here's the picture I got them to sign. I thought it was pretty awesome. They're holding these chainsaws. Yeah. And if you couldn't read it, uh, Jen put, Beloved Carlin, Fatally Yours, Jen. And uh, Sylvia put, um, is that Dearest? I think it's Dearest Carlin. Blood-soaked kisses, Sylvia. I can't read what that says. Oh, Darling Carlin. That's right. Okay. They're very, very much like that. Like, they're very um, touchy-feely, open people, very lovey. Uh, legitimately, they hug every person. And it's not just like quick hug, like quick loose hug. It's like a legitimate, at least 10 second, like clutched hug. Like you feel them actually squeezing you. And some people would be like, you know, that's kind of weird. But I don't think so. I think it's actually kind of sweet because how often in your life do you actually hug people? I mean, even in your day-to-day -day life with your loved ones, like how often do you actually hug them? And there was some scientific study that came out not long ago that was saying that, you know, a extended seconds of, of hugging actually cr helps create like legitimate feelings of like, um, of bonding between people. So I don't know if they're, if they know that and they're kind of, you know, using that, but they're just genuine people. And they're excited about horror, they're excited about their fans, and they're just like lovely people. So it's really nice. And each time, every single person, they would come around the table, both of them would hug that person with like legitimate hugs, like I said, then they would go back around the table, sit down, start the signing, and just talk. Like, whatever you wanted to ask them, go for it. They're very open, and they would like parlay that into some other things too. And then after that, they would get up, come around, and give that person a hug again. So that was really cool. They even hugged my buddy Rich, who didn't pay to have anything signed and was just kind of standing on the side. They ran over and hugged him, too. They're just cool people. And he was like, what, what is this about? And I believe Sylvia was like, we're Canadian. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But when I talked to them, I was very honest. And when I, I say that, I mean, I've not seen any of their films. To, to be honest, I haven't seen any of their films. A bunch of their films, See No Evil 2... And as well as American Mary, those two films are on my Netflix DVD queue and have been for some time now. It's just, I have almost 500 DVDs on that queue, so I have a lot to get through. Um, I watch a decent amount of films, but there are so many films that I want to see. So I told them that up front. I was like, I haven't seen any of your stuff. And they're like, oh, really? They weren't offended. They were just kind of like, oh, okay. And I said, the reason I want to meet you guys is because I'm an avid reader of Rumorg magazine. Been reading it for over ten, for at least ten years, avidly. And whenever they've done interviews, which they've done, it, I think three interviews over the about ten years that I've been reading that magazine. Yeah, I'd say probably about three interviews. Most recently, um, there was one just like from the issue January February issue, I believe. Uh, and I was just saying that their interviews are, like, the best. Like, they do awesome interviews, and you can just tell how excited they are about horror in general, how they have fresh, cool, new ideas, how they, they just want to get out there and they just want to grow horror. They want to add new stuff, they want to do great film, and it's really cool. And I, I, I also have a lot of fascination in how they work together, because, first of all, siblings, <laughs> siblings fight. You know, I'm sure everyone knows that. Siblings fight. I don't know, I, well, okay, I don't think I could work with my siblings, like, in a job for years and years and years. That just seems like something that couldn't happen without people just going off the deep end, having too many problems. You want to keep those things separated. So that kind of fascinates me. But also just creatively, like, who adds what to what. And Jen was actually telling me that she's more of, like, the light and more comedic aspects of things. And Sylvia does more of like the sadistic, gory, 
intense, like, messed up stuff. And she's like, when we're writing a script, you know, Sylvia will put something, like, awful and horrendous into the into the script, like, good that way, though. And then she'll come in and be like, okay, well, let's lighten the mood real quick. Let's do something a little bit light or, like, comedic or something like that. So it was cool for them to kind of break that down for me. Uh, I was also talking to them about how excited I am for their new film to come out. They're doing a remake of Rabid. Yes, the David Cronenberg film, Rabid. And I was like, I feel like that's really ballsy. And they were like, oh, yeah, well, thank you. And they were telling me how there were other people who wanted to remake the film, and David Cronenberg had to sign off on it, and he passed on a lot of these people because their visions for it were either the same as what Cronenberg already did or just weren't great ideas. Um, So he said yes to them because they have a different way to approach it. And Jen... Saska was telling me that, you know, whereas uh, David Cronenberg's Rabid was was from the perspective of a heterosexual white male gaze, which you can see with the camera work, she, specifically Jen, she said, I'm pansexual. So I think that, you know, there's the ability to find everyone attractive. And for that reason, the gaze that my camera has when directing is very different. And you'll see that difference. And... So there's a lot more of, like, a female perspective to it. There's more of, like, a pansexuality to it. So um, I'm interested to see it. I just I just think that when there are directors who know what they're doing, who do a remake and want to put some different spin on it, I know a lot of people are just like, ugh. But it could be awesome. It could be, like, a fresh, new, cool take, and it could end up being, like, a totally different film. Like, kind of similar, but totally different at the same time. So I was just really excited about that, and... Um, yeah, I got some really good information out of them, and uh, I, I love that. I love being able to just, like, talk horror shop with them, and they were just like, I was like, you guys just, like, ooze excitement for horror in general, and they're like, oh, yeah, like, and they were like, we were raised on it. Like, that's that's our childhood, and we're still excited about it. I was like, that's really awesome. Like, that's, that's great. So, super lovely people. They were my favorite part of the convention because they were just so nice, and also they didn't have, like, a huge, huge line, so they were able to, like, Spend a little extra time with people, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's what I ended up doing at the convention. Um, if you guys noticed when I was talking, I was saying I went to Monster Mania 40 and then to this 42. I wanted to go to the to number 41, which is in Hunt, Van, Hunt Valley, Maryland, but I couldn't go because I happened to be out of state during that time. Um, and it really sucked because, like, Ray Wise was there, um, the woman, ah, damn, I forget her name right now, but the woman who played Laura Palmer in Twin Peaks was there. I love Twin Peaks, by the way, so I was really, like, broken up about that. Uh, Robert England was there, but I already got him, but Heather Langenkamp was there, and I was like, Argh! hopefully these people, you know, show up again at these conventions, but I will be going to the to number 44, in Hunt Valley this year in the first weekend of October because Bruce Campbell will be there as soon as they announced that last year. I bought my tickets like a year in advance because I'm like, I'm not missing out on Bruce Campbell. And you better believe I'm getting, I got the pre-tickets and I will be standing in line like immediately because I know that his line is going to be insane. So anyway, awesome. Everyone, thank you for checking this out. Uh, The final thing I need to do is thank everyone who works for Monster Mania and all the volunteers with Monster Mania because you guys did a really good job. You had to get really creative with, you know, looping lines around and stuff like that. You're always super, super helpful with, you know, if anyone had a question, like, you go here, this is what's here, this is what's there. Um, just nice people. Do a great job. And it's hard work. And they're volunteering. So, you know, people, be cool. Uh, and then um, I think they do need to move venues, though. Because they, they're now cutting off tickets. You could sell a lot more tickets. And you wouldn't have as, as big of an issue with the lines if you move to a bigger venue. You know, I like where it is because it's convenient for me relatively. But I feel like it's got to move. If you want it to grow, then that's, you know, I'm just saying that. Take it if, take it if you want it. Don't if you don't. It doesn't really affect me. Uh, but I guess one more thing, though. Um, Feruza Balk was there. She had a big line. Because they did, like, a craft reunion. And, um... She showed up, she didn't show up in time for the Friday night to sign any autographs or do any photo ops or anything. So some people got kind of pissed about that online. And they were really like taking it out on um, Monster Mania. And I was like, what is wrong with you people? Like, they can't control when the celebrities show up. 
They reach out to celebrities. They book them to come in. They can't control if they make it or not. They can't control how that person, you know, meets out their time to figure out how best to get there in time. That it's not on them, those things. And I know that they do a good job of trying to, you know, mitigate the issues that arise from those things. So just be kind, people. Like, realize when it's within their control and when it's not within their control. And in that case, it wasn't. But the positive about that is when I, I saw online when people were, like, being ridiculous about it, that they actually, um, there were a lot of people who came to the defense of Monster Mania and were like, look, it's not their fault. So that was good. But anyway, thank you, Monster Mania. You guys did a really good job. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. My buddy Rich had a lot of fun. Uh, we're exhausted. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Uh, if you want to know whenever I put up videos, which I'm trying to do more, uh, hit the notification bell and you'll get that information. Uh, and then also comments. Let's talk about things. Let's, did you go to the convention? Do you go to other conventions? Let's talk about horror con stuff because I love it. You love it. And then likes if you can. That'd be great. Uh, but thanks again, and until next time, keep it brutal.